So what about the reflection reflection coefficient? Now, we also recall that we have, must have r plus t equals to 1, right? And since t is equal to 0, I may immediately say that r is equal to 1. Now, this may be quite fair, but we want to conclusively prove this result. This result that all the particles will be reflected as we go towards the potential step if the energy of the particle is less than the potential, uh, be not. So, we will borrow the result from the previous problem when r is equals to the intensity of the wave that travels in this direction, okay, this direction over here, and divided by the intensity of the wave that travels in this direction over here, otherwise known as the magnitude of b squared divided by the magnitude of a squared. So, now, how do I get this b and a? Well, we are going to go back to the continuity conditions. Okay? Remember, when we saw for the, the wave function, we always got this constant a, b, c, the continuity equations will help us express this in terms of one of them, one of the, the constants. So in this case, we'll let it be A. And we all can also see that continuity conditions, there are two of them. Okay, we'll just say right now, at x equals to zero, okay, the wave function needs to be continuous, so thus is first derivative. So psi one equals to psi two, uh, d psi one in terms of dx is equals to d psi two in terms of x is equal to here like that. Okay, so we want to apply the continuity equations Two of them to really express B and C in terms of A. Okay, again, you can see that we have three unknowns, so we need to express in terms of one of them. So, okay, the first one, okay, I've written out over here, is just basically substitute zero inside X, we get one for all the transcendental numbers, and then we want to differentiate them, so really, really the argument just is brought down, and I think this is a minus over here, okay, the argument is brought down, all right, and then now, now what can we see? So now we want to rearrange for B first, all right, we'll substitute A plus B inside C, so I'll get ik1a minus ik1b is equals to minus k2a minus k2b. Alright, and this time let's bring a b over to the left hand side. So I get minus ik1b plus k2b is equals to minus ik1 uh, minus k2. Okay, I just put that bracket at a. Alright, and so B is now equal to, I'll bring this over, uh, over down here, but I'll multiply top and bottom by imaginary number I. Okay, so that I can get a nicer form. Okay, just basically multiplying by imaginary number I. Minus I multiplied by I so is positive, right? So the K1 will be over here, minus I K2, and I'll divide by K1 plus I K2. And this is written in terms of A. Okay, it's all nicely done. And now if I want to write the coefficient c, I'll just substitute this back inside over here. Basically, it's just this plus 1, right? So it's this plus 1. c is this plus 1 of that. So if I plus 1, the, the denominator stays as it is. I'll get a k1 plus ik2. And I'll bring this over to the top. The ik2 cancels out, so I'll get 2k1a. So, quite neat, quite neat. The continuing conditions allows us to express b and c in terms of a. Now, when I do that, now I can calculate formally the reflection coefficient, which is given by this over here. If I want to take the magnitude, notice that the magnitude of A squared will cancel out, so all I need is to square the top. So I'll get K1 minus IK2 squared, okay, and then I would have uh, I, uh, okay, K1 plus uh, IK2, okay, sorry, since that's B, I need to take the magnitude first. So I'll take the magnitude and I'll square. Uh, that, right? And taking the magnitude, notice that I'll ignore the imaginary i. I will square this and I'll square this, add them up. I'll square this and I'll square this and i add them up. What do I get is k1 squared plus k2 squared divided by k1 squared plus k2 squared. And then when I do that, notice that they're the same and then I'll get 1, right? Which is what is expected as we said over here, r is equal to 1. Now we use the continued conditions, we got that same result. So, Total reflection of particles as it goes towards the potential step, r equals to 1. Alright, now, it seems that we got the same picture classically, but there is one key fact that we are missing. There's one key fact that we're missing, and that comes from the solutions to the showing the equation, because we need to somehow account for this solution over here. Alright? Now, first, we yes, we eliminate this solution because it diverges. Now, I forgot to talk about, forgive me, that this solution doesn't diverge, okay? Because e to the minus k2x, k2 being finite, as x tends towards infinity, this will tend towards zero. So, this tells us something, all right? And this tells us that there, in fact, exists a wave given as that in the region where x is greater than zero, in this region over here. 
okay, this region over here. So classically, we know that the particle travels over here, and then quantum the quantum theory coincides with that, okay, due to the particle-like behavior. Why r is equals to one? Okay, the classical sorry the particle doesn't enter this what we call as the classical forbidden region. Okay, classical forbidden region, forbidden region, right? Because basically classical mechanics tells us that the particle can't exist over there. The quantum theory coincides with that due to the particle-like behavior as we show r equals to one. But the wave function as given by psi two equals to c e to the minus k two x manages to penetrate the classical forbidden region and it goes like this right now we want to show that conclusively and what we will do to show that is the probability density which will take me very quickly to do because all what, what I just need to do is that I'll take the probability density of psi 2 all right I'll just have to basically take the magnitude of that and I'll square that all right now C is given by this over here so it's very easy so now what I have to do is just go for k1 squared the magnitude of a squared divided by k1 uh, k1 yes k1 plus I'll take the magnitude of that so it's k1 squared plus k2 squared all right and then after that I would have a e to the minus 2 k 2x okay because I'm squaring that so I will bring in a 2 inside and as we can see notice that very nicely the probability density is a real function it's a real function and since it's a real function we can graph it out over here which is what I did because I, I knew that that you know it would be a real function given as that form does it uh, does it um, decay yes it does because as x tends towards infinity this will tend towards zero as I drawn over here now there's a special name to call this and this is called the evanescent wave evanescent wave if you were to study electrodynamics it's really like an electromagnetic wave that exists in certain metallic media okay it's so an evanescent wave and this tells us that the wave-like behavior of the particle as predicted by quantum theory tells us that it's able to penetrate the classical forbidden region even though its particle-like behaviors tells us that all the particles get reflected okay a very difficult concept to understand but you know really because we're trying to consolidate the particle-like behavior and the wave-like behavior as given by de Broglie's hypothesis this is one way that we have shown that using the Schrodinger equation. Now this would be more striking if the potential, let's just say at this point over here, drops to zero in the finite region, right? In the finite region, drops towards zero. And when it drops towards zero, what we will now have is called a potential barrier. Okay, as you can see, it's a barrier over here. So the particle needs to penetrate barrier. And this is what happens. The particle travels like that. Particle-like behavior at this point, as shown by the Schrodinger equation, all of them get reflected with R equals to one. There'll be this evanescent wave. Right, the wave-like behavior is able to penetrate the, the potential barrier. But at this point, when it exits the potential barrier, when the potential is equal to zero, the, the particle would somehow re-emerge, right? Re-emerge. And then again we have the probability density over here. Now this effect is a is a really popular phenomenon in quantum mechanics, which is called tunneling. Tunneling. And this is what we're gonna look towards next. Right? But for this lesson, which I think is quite a good one. We have just shown really this idea of the evanescent wave. How, yes, the reflection coefficient is one. All particles get reflected. But wave-like behavior, as predicted by quantum mechanics, is able to penetrate the potential step. Continuity conditions show that. We show the reflected conditions one, but we need to account for the wave solution side equals to two. And this is how we account for it. So next lesson, we'll talk about tunneling. And maybe this idea will get more clear to us. Right? Thanks for your time.